So a couple of weeks ago, I did a video on things I own one of as a minimalist, and I thought we would take it one level down and go over the things that I no longer own. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Christina and welcome. I talk all about minimalism, intentional living and intentional spending. So if any of that sounds interesting to you, then please give this video a thumbs up. It really helps out my channel. And if you aren't already, please subscribe. Okay, so there's a lot of things that I have decluttered over the past, I'd say year since I've started getting deep into minimalism. And there's a lot of things that I've decided to let go of. There's a lot of intentionality around what you do keep and just as much around what you don't. The first thing I no longer own are free samples. You know, like those little minis or hotel samples from back in the day when we used to be able to travel. And when I used to make Sephora orders all the time, I would actually love to use my points on those little mini samples. And I always told myself it was so I could try the things out, but those samples I never ended up using. They would just end up taking up space in my samples drawer, in my drawer of backups that I never ever used. And the one thing I find interesting about like hoarding samples and the rationale of holding on to them just in case for travel is I feel like I worked so hard to get a skincare routine in particular down pat. And usually when I have these little travel size samples of things, it's never what I actually use on a regular basis that I know like my skin is happy with, my hair, whatever. And I feel like that's just like a risk of disrupting that sort of equilibrium when it comes to my skincare anyway. So I no longer hold on to free samples. A lot of them come in like plastic single use packaging that just ends up creating more waste. It creates more clutter. It takes up more space. I stress out about using them before they expire. And even when I wanna get rid of them or give them away, that requires energy and thought to think about who wants them, who might get use out of it. It's just energy and space that I really don't need those things to take up my time with. So I'm no longer accepting or requesting free samples. The next thing I no longer own is purposeless decor. You know, things like knickknacks or kitschy items or things that make me look more sophisticated than I really am, like coffee table books of famous photographers that I've never heard of. Yeah, stuff like that. I love home decor. I love when people can kind of express who they are through their home decor. But for me, a lot of this decor really serves no purpose. It doesn't sort of represent who I am at all. And it's just another thing that takes up space or that I have to clean the dust off of. So we do have a few knickknacks here and there. Like I have my grandfather's old film camera. We have a candle that we like to burn here and there, but for me, there's either some sentimental value or some purpose to those things that take up space on our surfaces. I don't see the need to have little figurines or coffee table books, just any sort of knickknack, campy, kitschy kind of thing, tchotchkes, whatever. My coffee table book doesn't really say much about me. The next thing I no longer own are specified kitchen gadgets. You know, things like the banana guard that I got rid of. That thing still looks really suggestive to me. I don't know. Get your mind out of the gutter, Christina. But things like the slap chop, banana guards, garlic holder, an avocado holder, apple slicers, kitchen gadgets that serve pretty much only one purpose and that probably get used maybe once or twice a year. I think everybody has had those things in their life. And for me, I've made it a point to get rid of them. We do have a couple of, I'd say, unitaskers, like we have a lemon squeezer thing and a garlic press. But that's just because for me, I think one of my biggest pet peeves is chopping or grating garlic. So we ended up getting a garlic press. But if it's something that you actually use, then I think have at it. But otherwise, slap chops, banana guards, apple slicers, I don't really see a need to have those. Item number four that I no longer own is obsolete tech. And that's because we send it to the technology graveyard or we give it away to someone who could actually use it. Like anytime I upgraded my phone, I would give my older phone to a family member. And sometimes places like Apple, for example, will take your old products and give you a little bit of cash back for them. I mean, I don't think it's anything really significant, but at least they're taking it and using the item for parts or sending it to the tech graveyard and getting it disposed of properly. I used to hold on to like old iPods, iPads, 
the old first generation cords, USB cables. I don't know when I was ever gonna use my iPod Nano again. The next thing I no longer own is, and I think this is actually a popular one amongst the female minimalists, and that is an underwire bra. I am a member of what you might call the itty bitty titty committee. And for me, I just don't have a need for an underwire bra. I know there's a lot of women out here who require extra support, but for me, they were uncomfortable. My boobs would never fill the bra properly. I've never really had a proper fitted bra ever. For me, for my boobies, they just need a bralette and I'm cool with wearing that. I used to have an old like strapless one that I liked to use to give myself a little bit more volume in that area, but it still didn't really fit properly. It was uncomfortable. And now when it comes to needing like a strapless type of bra, I just go for pasties or no bra at all. I know there's a lot of women out there who need a lot more support and more lift for their chest, but I think that's when minimalism becomes very individualized. You put intention and money and value and time into the things that you need and you remove the things that you don't. Moving into another sort of fancy lady item that I no longer own and that is high heels or pumps. I used to be obsessed with wedges, stilettos, high heels, the higher the better. And guess how often I wore these types of shoes? Never. They're uncomfortable, they don't work in my everyday life, they're not practical for walking and I have to walk everywhere, I stand at work, I opt for sneakers, and when I do wear heels, I have I have a pair of like slip-on mules that are like a kitten heel that are maybe like this high and they're pretty comfortable. That doesn't bother me. A few of my booties have heels on them, but they're all like I'd say like an inch to an inch and a half and that is the maximum that I can do. I feel like heels are very much a thing where you go into the car and then you get out of the car and then you're sitting. That's how I handle heels. If you can wear them all day long, kudos to you. I very much admire that because heels are beautiful, they're sexy, it looks really hot on a lot of people who rock them, both men and women. But for me, it's just something that I never wear. The shoes sit in the box and it's such a fantasy self thing that I am just, just happy to accept that heels are not really a thing that are in my life. Another item that I no longer own or spend money on are dryer sheets. And that's because we got these little dryer ball thingies. They're actually quite cute. And my sister was the one that got me into using dryer balls. And actually, I don't really dry a lot of my clothes in the dryer anymore anyway. I prefer air drying a lot of my pieces because I think it just helps prolong the life of your clothing. But these are actually really great. They are reusable, they're long lasting, and they do over a bunch of uses, really do soften your clothes and prevent static from building up. It just saves on a lot of waste. It's just an item that I could remove from my budget and just simply eliminate from my life. There's really no need for dryer sheets. The next item I no longer own, and this one was fairly recent, and that is dresses. I ended up decluttering every single last one of my dresses, and that's because I don't wear dresses. Dresses I really identified as a fantasy self item. They are an item that in theory I think is beautiful. I think they look beautiful on other people and can be a closet staple for a lot of us. But for me, I never wear them. I never feel myself in them. I think I fought long enough to try to incorporate dresses into my wardrobe and to wear them and it just doesn't last. So for me, there's just something that I finally decided Nope, no room in my life for this. It becomes more of an effort rather than it being effortless. A lot of people find wearing dresses effortless and for me, it's the opposite way. So it's something that I decided to let go of. And that brings me into the next thing I no longer own and that is skirts. I feel the same way about skirts as I do dresses. I had one skirt for quite a long time. Uh, that I only ever really ended up wearing when I shot photos for Instagram or some people when I was doing more fashion type of videos would request outfits with skirts. And that's the only time I found myself wearing it. I never chose to wear it other than that. So it's just something that took up space in my wardrobe and that I kind of wore for looking back like inauthentic reasons. It wasn't something that made me feel good about myself. I was doing it for other people. But it, again, it's just another piece that didn't feel me, never felt quite right, and that I don't wanna fight anymore to try to wear. Another thing I no longer own as a minimalist is holiday decor. So that goes for Christmas, Easter, 
What else do people decorate for? Halloween, Valentine's Day. Lisa, don't you ruin another love day. We don't decorate for the holidays. I think, you know, maybe these lights are as Christmas as we get, and maybe in the in the fall on occasion, we'll buy a mini pack of gourds because they look cute and they decompose. I love admiring other people's decorations. And I think that's a great way to enjoy the holidays that doesn't cost money, that doesn't take up space, that doesn't take up storage space, and is less wasteful that way. It's kind of a way to share the wealth and to enjoy the holiday spirit, whatever holiday it is, without having things take up space in your own home. Maybe that's selfish, I don't know. But I feel like it's also a way that we share. So those are 10 things I no longer own as a minimalist. The list is actually quite longer than that, but I didn't wanna sit here all day and explain why I don't own X, Y, and Z thing. So give this video a thumbs up and let me know if you wanna see more videos like this. There's plenty of things I no longer own or pay for as a minimalist. And I guess also as a way to cut items from my budget so I can get out of debt faster. So let me know in the comments what you guys no longer own if you are trying to minimize your life or just to cut things from your budget. I hope you guys have a great rest of your day, night, whatever time you're watching this, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.